our next speaker is Wei Han Liang, Chief Architect and Senior Fellow at Dan Storrent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, today, I so this is a long, kind of loaded title, right? So, what I want to bring to you on this conversation is actually three powerful words, very powerful words, scaling, open, and the AI, right? As we enter the era defined by architecture, artificial intelligence, um, so uh, this concept, these three concepts, the scaling, open, and AI, is actually come together in a critical way. Um, so to support the exponential growth on the AI uh, workload, uh, we need to scale the hardware design as we never did before. But we cannot do this alone or in the silos. Right? So therefore, open compute technology like open architecture and an open ecosystem, right? from my perspective, is emerging as the only sustainable way to efficiently address this scaling demand right, at the pace of the AI demands. Right? That's why risc is playing such a pivotal role in this new era defined by artificial intelligence. How do I, how do I change the slide? Thank you. Um, so we are living through mostly extraordinary moment in the history of artificial intelligence. From my perspective, it's not only a technological revolution, right, but it's also a civilization level shift. Um, I think a century, you know, you know, a couple hundred years later, historian will actually identify this as a critical junction of human history that the machine intelligence is not only reshaping or in some area actually even to replace the human decision making, right, labor, and also even the creativity, right. So like the, the picture show here, AI in the future will actually be personalized, you will be ubiquitous, right, everywhere, right, to serving the human need in the day, every aspect of the life. So to address such a demand, and um, we need require a diverse landscape of the silicon, right? So this diversity of the silicon need to embrace architecture, diversity, variety, heterogeneity, and also the composable design. So it's um, actually a very profound challenging, and it's also the historical opportunity for a silicon maker like us, right? So this is actually identifies the golden era of the silicon diversity. So why the open source architecture enable the silicon diversity? Right, open architecture is actually the foundation for supporting the silicon diversity for a couple of reasons. First, it's actually scalable. Um, open architecture like RISPI allow you to build the hardware, you know, up or down based on the workload requirement from lighter weight age inference to high end, you know, data center CPU, right? Second is extensible, right? Designer can add in any arbitrary extension, right? Without approval or license agreement, right? To cater your architecture to special application. The third is gonna be efficient, right? Because your design is specialized for your application, you will give you the maximum performance, most power efficiency and cost effective. The third is a stable, right? Because now you have a multi-vendor working on a one solution, right? You have strengthened the ecosystem. You also now has more resilient supply chain for certain company because I don't have to, depending on one company provide the IP, I can have a multiple company provide the IP. And this is the reason why the open source architecture, right, is important to provide the silicon diversity. So Tenstorin as a company, right, so now we have close to 900 people and the headquarters in the Silicon Valley, 
And uh, we're actually working on why variety of silicon technology are actually supporting the status of our silicon diversity. So we have two key IP, right? One is the um, AI IP called Tensor Neo, and second one is actually CPU IP based on the resource architecture, right? We're also working on this SOC technology like fabric, memory controller, security, power management, and then the rest, technology, security technology, debug technology, right, as a foundation for setting up the SOC with our computation IP. We're also building the chip that technology, right? And this is using our product, and then using this for the scalability, composability, and modularity of the design. And this application is actually applying to our data center design, right? Also, in our, it's important for our automobile strategy. We are partnering in the Europe, and then we also use that for our engagement with the Japanese, you know, uh, research institute on the age inference model, in age inference chip. Um, over here, I want to talk about um, our RISPI technology. I can spend like a whole hour talking about our AI technology, but this is a RISPI conference. I'm going to spend time talking about our CPU open source architecture technology over there. Um, from my perspective, right, uh, RISPI has been here for 15 years. I'm actually really glad to see Professor Bao actually propose a high-performance RISPI processor because I feel there's a really need a high-performance architecture implementation that addressing the need in the data center, right, in the automobile, and also the industrial, like, embedded application. Right, so in this perspective, right, so high-performance CPU is needed. We also need a high-performance CPU, right, uh, implementation for deep software development, right? A lot of software without high-performance CPU there, out there as a development vehicle, it's very difficult to do compiler optimization, you know, system management software, bring out that kind of thing. So remind me, uh, I want to remind you that um, what we already done, Tensor, right? So this is ASCOM processor, it's an AY decode machine, three loads for units, six ALU, two branch unit, two 256 vector unit. This has been in work for three years, right, since I joined the Tensor. And then it's now to the final stage of the design. As you can see here, we're going to use this ASCOM processor in our chip that technology called Athena, right? Athena will contain a cluster of a high performance, um, <coughs> high performance ASCOM core, and you have PCIe Gen 16 and LPTD5X, you know, memory controller. It's a self-sufficient computer, small computer chip that, right? You can use it embedded in our AI heterogeneous computation, um, SIP, as I show on the, uh, over there. You can also a standalone device serving a small embedded processor for any application you would like to have, or even like, uh, RISPI PC. So it has been on work. It's been um, working in the uh, Samsung SF4, right? And it's been performance correlated in the emulation, right? 18 spacking per gigahertz, right? Like you can see here, this is the physical design diagram. You see on the right hand side, it's actually four high performance core, left hand side is four high performance core. In the middle is 12 megabyte, you know, second level cache, shared cache. So to support the future roadmap, we actually have a dedicated team, right? Um, we will continue improving the ASCOM core in the next two years by lifting the performance about greater than 10 percent per year. And then at the same time, I have a team actually already spending on working on the performance model microarchitecture study for the new core, which we um, will be introduced on 2027 with the 35 spec in per gigahertz. So we had two parallel team working on the Ascalon processor, which continue improving in 10 years, 10% performance, you know, in the year clip. And also we are branching the other team working on the high performance core on the 35 spec in per gigahertz. So when it's actually into this on 2027, we believe this will be one of the highest performance core, right, uh, at that time, even compared to Apple. So this is the calendar auto order processor, right? So uh, it's target 35 spec in per gigahertz, 35 uh, spec 2K17 per gigahertz, 
you will be RV23 plus, right? So it has a very big front end, advanced branch predictor, two taken branch, decoupled front end, micro op cache, the mid core will be 16 wide decode, got resistive sharing to make it more efficient. One kilobyte RB, it has six low slow units, right? ALU four branch unit, four 256 bit vector units, and four FPU and matrix engine. So it's a very complex design. So we start ramping up the, um, the design phase on the RTL coding and also implementation. Hopefully two years later, we'll see this uh, core actually materialize and will be available as IP and also for us using our heterogeneous compute system. At the same time, we also have a team lifting the existing ASCON to satisfy ISO 26262 functional safety requirement feature. Right, this is an important part of our automobile robotic strategy. Right, so we have a team working on this. You are adding the dual core lock step, right, time disparity, you have coherent, non-coherent bus protected by CRC and ECC, ECC protection, right, rest feature, safety feature, and also Sophia test library support, right. So since this is a derivative of the Escalon, I think the uh, performance-wise will be the same. They may be running a low, slightly lower frequency just because of the requirement in that particular area. So next part I want to talk about is that how do we using the chip that technology to increase the silicon diversity, the thing we talk about, right? Um, so chip that, everybody knows chip that, eventually chip that is that it encourages the design reuse. It's a low cost development, lower your cost of development because the reusability of the design. It improves the composability and also enable you to compose a design with the heterogeneity of the acceleration, CPU, and any accelerator you want, different kind of memory, right? So it's a great way to improve your silicon diversity by single design, right? So Tensora has been working on this te technology for two and a half years, and then one of the major hurdles for this technology is actually the compatibility among the chip that. So we plan to open our compute, uh, compatibility chip that technology to public so that we can invite the other people to join the bandwagon of composing design together to even increase the diversity of the silicon design. So this we call open chip layer architecture. It's actually a layer architecture and you compose about five layer. There's a physical layer which you define the mechanical characteristics, physical interconnect or electrical signaling. The second layer is actually transport layer defined like the protocol using UCIE, a bunch of wire or ICC. There's also a protocol layer which is defined for the bus protocol like SC, CHI, or our proprietary OCCP technology. We also have the system layer which is actually defined the boot process, security, safety, REST technology, how do you address the scheme to access memory from the other chip that system management and debug and then test and, and also the interrupt technology. Right. On the highest level is actually the software layer, right? So we have an open chip that software, uh, open chip that management interface, and also we have device configuring data software layer and also the boot image format. So it's a comprehensive technology cover all the way from the physical layer up to the software layer, right? So we plan to open this spec and then ask, you know, industry to join this effort so that in the future you can imagine there's a, not only the system integrator but the SIP, right, silicon in a chip integrator taking a compatible chip that and compose them together in a chip that with the specialization you want, right? So this is our end goal. We feel with this technology compatible chip that we can actually enable the silicon diversity needed for the future AI workload. This just give you an example how you're actually using this technology. So in the center there's a base die, right, which contain IO feature, right, and also maybe memory controller, right. On the left hand is a CPU chip that, on the right hand is the AI chip that, on the top is actually proprietary memory chip that. 
right? So the color block here is actually the uh, OCE compatible implementation hour. And for each company, right, they should be just focused on their core competency, competence technology, right, like accelerator or CPU or memory technology they have, right? Instead of everybody tape out a chip with the memory controller, with the I.O. device, with a CPU, that's no longer necessary with this technology. You can actually match in different company technology and put them together in the SIP if they can be compatible to each other, right? So this is actually our contribution to this to the um, you know, chip industry that enable this composability in the future. And as I mentioned, this is important for the silicon diversity in the future. So we've been using this technology, this kind of uh, chip that composability in our auto effort, right? Very obviously, like, you can design the AI chip that and then scaling up based on your autonomous driving capability requirement, right? So you can use in a single you know, uh, chip that to supporting L2 and then incrementally adding more AI computation chip that to do L3, L4, and even go to the data center. And we are using that for composing our next generation, right, neurosymbolic AI computate, computer, right? So you compose of the AI and also the um, <coughs> uh, risk by CPU, high performance CPU. So this heterogeneous technology is possible due to the compatibility of the chip that. And we are working on with the AIDC, Japanese AI Design Center. They actually using their AI chip that and using our CPU chip that compose the age inference chip they have. So this is another demonstration how the industry from the different organization entity can cooperate together to compose the computation you need for your application. So summary, I think AI is a breakthrough technology, right? So it's not only marked as technology breakthrough. From my perspective, it's actually a civilization level shift, right? So AI personalization, ubiquitous, right, will be here, right? So to meet in this kind of computation, you actually need a silicon diversity, as I mentioned. And TensorRing is building the respite open source technology Right, with very strong high performance roadmap. And at the same time, we actually start opening up our chip that compatibility. We want to invite industrial organization together, right, and join partition together and forming the SIP based on our open source architecture. This will greatly improve the silicon diversity vision we set in this at the beginning of this presentation. Thank you.